Hi everybody. Uh, this week's project is all about op art. What is op art? Op art is abstract art, which we know about abstract art, that gives the illusion of movement by the precise use of pattern and color. That sounds like a really complicated definition, but I think you'll catch on to it really quick. Think optical illusion. What does the word op mean in op art? Op is short for optical, which refers to the eyes and sight. So if you think about going to the optometrist, where you get your eyes checked, that's where op comes from. Uh, so all visual artwork has to do with what you see, but op art is really, the op stands for just how much the artists are interested in the effect on your eyes that the artwork has. So in other words, they're trying to like trick your eyes in some way. When was op art a big thing? Um, well, it's still a big thing today. There's still op artists making artwork today. But it really got started in the 1960s. That's when um, the op art movement uh, really kind of took off. And some of those artists that are most famous for their op art is one is Bridget Riley and she's still making artwork today and you can see lots of her artwork is just black and white but she also experiments with color as well and I recommend looking her up. This is probably the most famous op artist and maybe one of the first to kind of make op art a big thing, Victor Vosterly. And here are a couple other op artists that I really don't know too much about, but um, are worth looking into. Some of them make op art paintings, and some do sculpture as well. Here are your options for uh, how we are going to create our own op art. And there's different levels of difficulty. And each video or each uh, project has a video that goes along with it. Um, most of the videos are not videos that I've made. I made one to accompany this, but there's lots of other talented art teachers that have already created how-to videos. And probably your easiest um, beginner level project is this one here um, with the shapes and stripes and what you need to complete this project is a normal sized white piece of paper. You can use a bigger one as well. And a ruler is helpful, but you don't have to use a ruler. You can actually just use the edge of a book or a um, piece of straight cardboard to draw your lines. But you do need something straight to draw those lines with. And then you'll see that they have a variety of shapes that they've traced in this project. Um, those are helpful, so if you have any sort of toys that might be um, shapes like blocks or um, some sort of pattern blocks. Uh, but if you don't, uh, just find a lid to like um, an oatmeal container or a yogurt container and you can trace that for your circles. Um, and you do actually need to color this project, whether you color it with a black marker or a black crayon and just leave the other stripes white. Um, that's probably the most the least amount of color you can add. But um, I think this project really benefits from adding two complementary colors, like the one you see. Purple and yellow are across from each other on the color wheel, which I think really helps um, the illusion of this project. Stepping up in difficulty is uh, this one, which is like the optical illusion of a hole in the table going through your paper. And you really just need a piece of paper and a pencil for this. You have to use some sort of pencil to shade with because you can see the value change um, on the inside of that hole. You might want to use a marker as well for the darkest portions. Um, then stepping up. The difficulty once more is this optical illusion of the hand coming out of the paper. 
and all you really have to have for this one is a pencil and a paper and your hand. Um, so you can trace your hand and then it's really uh, dependent on how well you do those contour lines, so the lines that kind of like go straight and then curve. Um, that's the tricky part that really pushes the illusion. This is probably the most difficult of all the projects um, if you want to challenge yourself. Uh, these contour line kind of like worm tunnels. Uh, you can do it just as a uh, black and white line drawing which you can see here but I think uh, you can also see those colored sections that are also shaded and that really pushes the illusion so I recommend uh, trying to get it colored um, however you can color it on your own and just little by little because um, it can be pretty time consuming. Um, the Art teacher that does this video uh, does a great job explaining some of the common problems that can mess up the illusion of your project. So really pay attention to those uh, common problems and make sure you don't run into those. Um, when you do add color, really the by far the best option for coloring this is colored pencils. I would not try to do it with markers. Um, if you don't have colored pencils, you can also just shade it with a graphite pencil, a normal pencil. And uh, last, this is, uh, if you're good with computers, this could be an easy option for you, but if uh, technology can challenge you, this may be um, a little more difficult. But this is essentially that first project done digitally. And I use the program sketchpad.io, the sketchpad. Um, it's free and it really works really well with the Chromebooks and I have a video walking you through how to do this version of the project um, on on that software so if you're interested in doing it digitally give this a try um, it can be fun but I know that maybe you've had a lot of screen time so you may want to just try one of the paper versions um, you can also use that program for doing just about anything uh, so if you want to try that and then uh, maybe try your own op art project uh, using the other tools in this in the program you could you could do that um, but just choose whichever project will work best for you in the materials you have and maybe the time you have for doing the artwork but one thing I want you to do is also focus on one or more elements of art so we're studying op art but the elements of art that really can create your uh, optical illusions you can focus on form which is showing something three-dimensional like the hands or the worms or the hole in the paper all of these projects use line in some way and some of them really heavily used line um, movement so think about op art that moves your eye around the paper or gives you the illusion of movement and if you choose to use color, make sure that you're choosing colors um, wisely. Don't just, not necessarily using every color in the marker box or every color in your colored pencil box. Um, think about the colors you're using and why you're using them. For example, the complementary colors or just choosing warm colors or just cool colors can really help uh, create unity in your artwork. All right, well, good luck. And if you uh, can share your artwork with me in the uh, Google folders, Google Photos folder, that'd be great. Um, and if you have questions, please give me an email. And good luck, everybody. I look forward to seeing what you create.